Hi everybody, this is Arkady Freckman, a New York City personal injury trial attorney. And today we're gonna revisit a popular topic over the last few weeks, and that is how much can I get and how long is it going to take? How long versus how much? But we're gonna look at it from a few different angles and I'm gonna give you case examples, which is what I promised you last time. So stay tuned. So let's see. When we talk about how long, right? How long is a, a personal injury case going to take? What we're really asking is, are we waiting for something? What are we waiting for, right? We're waiting for our money. We wanna get compensated for all the harms and all the losses. People wanna get compensated for the forever injury and the impact that this accident, that this fall, that this car crash has had on their life. They wanna get compensated. They wanna get fair and reasonable compensation for all the harms and all the losses, everything that's been taken from them and everything they've been left with. Sometimes when you're left with an injury, it's what you're left with and what you have to live with that's very, very difficult as well. So what are we waiting for, right? Number one, you could be waiting for the court, meaning that you file a lawsuit and you know the court gives the other side 30 days to answer the lawsuit and to appear. Or you put a case on the trial calendar and you say, I'm ready for trial. But because we're in New York City, you don't get a trial tomorrow, you might be on the calendar for like a year waiting for the court to give you that jury trial. And then when they do give you that jury trial, that's when you're gonna be able to pick a jury, settle the case, or get a verdict, right? So you're waiting on the court. Number two is you're waiting on the other side. You're waiting on the defense lawyer and you're waiting for them to give you documents or to give you evidence. For example, you might need a videotape, but they don't have the videotape or they say they don't have it. and or they give you part of a videotape, but it's not everything. And you say, look, I want the whole thing, or I want the surveillance that happened before my client fell, because that's gonna show whether you guys mop negligently, but they don't give you that, right? So you have to make a motion to compel and have the court force them. So now you're waiting on the court and you're waiting on the defense lawyer. So that's one of the ways that cases get delayed. And also you could be waiting on depositions, right? They could give you a know-nothing witness. You depose them, you get a little information, but there are other witnesses that are much better for you, but those aren't, be aren't being produced. So you have to make a motion and get that discovery and do those depositions. And you could also be waiting on your lawyer, right? Because a lot of people have lawyers and they're handling these personal injury cases, truck accident cases, spine fusion, surgery cases, whether it's a ceiling collapse, a construction site accident, it could be any type of case, right? Car crash, motorcycle accident. They're waiting on their lawyer. They think their lawyer is diligently prosecuting the case. But how do you really know, right? Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. And what I'm seeing a lot of times is when I take a case from another lawyer and I look at their file and I'm like, oh my God, what are they waiting for? Like one case I got and I looked at it and I just couldn't believe it. It's such a simple case. A car rear ends another car and the lawyer has been in like discovery depositions for like three years. The case is just like sitting there. You have to put the case on the trial calendar and then you gotta wait another year or more to get to trial. But this case isn't even on the trial calendar. So I was just like, what on earth could they possibly be doing? This isn't a complicated case. So, you know, you're waiting on your lawyer, but you have to always be in contact with your lawyer, go to their office, call them, text them, you know, make appointments, ask them questions, check the status of your case online. You wanna know, if they're really you know working on your case diligently and number four you could be waiting on the adjuster the insurance adjuster and i don't really think that there's a reason to wait on the adjuster a lot of people say look i sent my demand letter i sent my settlement letter now i'm waiting for them it doesn't really make sense to wait for them you know because remember they're not going to be fair they're not going to be impartial they're not like an independent you know, appraisal service that's gonna look at the real fair value of your case and just pay out on claims. Even though they're collecting your premiums, they'll happily do that. But when it comes time to pay out, they usually say, look, we're gonna decline it, we're gonna lowball it, we're gonna try to save our money. So what I like to do is give them a time limit, say, look, here's a case, here's, for example, a truck accident, client was stopped at a red light, he got rear-ended, he's got a herniated disc, he needs 
a percutaneous discectomy or he needs a spinal fusion, you have a million dollar policy. Okay, tender the million. You have 30 days. If you don't tender the million, give me a fair and reasonable offer against the million. Like, you know, give me an offer like from 750 to a million. We'll talk turkey. But if not, you know, fine. The 30 days elapse. Now all bets are off the table. There'll never be an opportunity to settle this case in this range again. Now the demand will be 2 million and we're just going to trial. We're going to take that verdict. So prepare yourself. Those are the rules and you know you got to stick to them and just you know those and that way i don't have to wait for them anymore right i made all, i made all the terms up clear up front and i just go with it so that's a really good way to do it i like that because otherwise you just wait for on them forever and they um and you also have to show them that you mean business that you're tough that you're not afraid because if you are just going to wait on them and you know and, and then they look you up and they say you don't even go to trial or i don't see a lot of verdicts for this lawyer they're not going to really offer you much. So that's the part about waiting, right? And then how about the other part? How much? Because we talked about how long and, you know, it does take time. And I'll give you some examples. For example, a case that I recently settled for 3.5 million. I mean, that was a case where the incident happened in 2015. So it took a, it took a while. It took like almost eight years. But that was mostly because we were waiting on the trial calendar for the uh, Bronx to give us a trial date. That's most of the delay. And also because of COVID and things like that. Other cases we've seen 2.8 million for a construction case, 1.8 million on a slip and fall, 2.4 million on a truck crash. All those took about three, four years, I would say on average. And then the quickest case we probably had was maybe like 15,000 at four months, right? The client treated for three months. We got the medical records. We sent the medical records to the insurance company. We only needed like another four weeks, the adjuster, you know, reviewed the medicals quickly. We got back on the phone with the adjuster and boom, we settled it for like 10 or 15,000, four months from the date of incident. But you know, it's a relatively small settlement. You're not going to get millions of dollars that way. The highest we ever did like that was actually a lead paint case where a baby was injured due to lead paint. And we also, we were going to file the lawsuit, but before filing the lawsuit, we just sent a letter to the adjuster. We found out who it was. It was a building. And we said, look, this is a serious uh, injury. Here's all the evidence, right? We give them all the medical record, the photos. And I think we ended up settling that case for about 250 to 275,000, um, something in that range. I think it was about 250. And it was also just a few months from the being retained in the case. It was a brand new case and we did not even file a lawsuit. They just kind of looked at, you know, our firm, they looked at the results of what's happening with these kinds of cases. And they said, look, we'll, we'll pay this. This is a fair number. So in that case, the insurance company was fair and they did it quickly. Sometimes they don't want to litigate cases. Another example was a, a labor law case where a guy was working and something was being hoisted up in the air and the chain snapped and it fell and it hurt his arm and it broke some fingers. He had to have like a minor surgery, but then he was better and he went back to work. And this was a lawsuit in the Bronx. At first we had to make a motion because part of the def one of the defendants was the city of New York. And, you know, he came to us late. So we had to make a motion to be able to sue the city because you have strict time limits when you sue the city. And this was beyond the 90 days. So that was granted. And then we were in litigation maybe just for a few months. And then we reached out to all the carriers and they said, look, it's a clear injury. We understand what this is. We'll settle it for you with you. I think it also settled for about 300 something thousand pretty quickly. There wasn't really much litigation. They didn't even need to take his deposition. They knew he was a worker. They had the incident report. They knew the chain broke. The thing fell on his hand. He had the fractured hand back to work. He's okay now. 300 something thousand, not a bad settlement quickly and, you know, moved on. He wanted it. He wanted the money. So that's basically some examples of how long it takes uh, and how everything works. Now, the other part of it, right? The other part is how much, how much am I going to get? And I think the simple formula for determining how much is basically number one. Well, how bad is the damage, right? How bad is the harm? The more harm that the defendant causes, the more injury, the more damage, the more compensation. Number two, well, how long is it affecting you? Like in that example, the person had a broken arm, but it got better, the surgery fixed it, uh, and he went back to work, now his arm is better. You know, so that's why it's not, it's a good number, but it wasn't a huge number, 300 something thousand. But if it was like a much bit back, worse injury, like a traumatic brain injury, which lasts for the rest of someone's life, or if it's like a spinal fusion, which is like a permanent injury, loss of, range of motion in the neck or lower back, or if it's something really, really serious, like a loss or amputation of a leg or an arm, you know, 
Th those are like permanent injuries, permanent life-changing forever injuries. Those could be worth millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. So that's number two. And number three, just the overall impact to your life. How has this impacted your life? So you want to almost like tell the story. This was what my life was like before. And this is, you know, my life before. And this is my life now. And it's different. You know, my life was better before. It was really good. And now it's like not as good. And you don't want to be telling that yourself as the injured plaintiff. I mean, you, you, to some extent, but you don't want to be like whining and just saying, oh, how bad it is. You want other people to do it for you. So that's why I like to use the community witnesses, the neighbors, the coworkers, the friends, people in your life to paint a picture. And remember, these people have nothing to gain or lose, right? They have no skin in the game. They're just independent, truly independent, like your mailman or your dry cleaner or your neighbor or your, you know, a coworker that doesn't really know you too well. Could be some friends, but you go, and you get each person to tell like a little story, like five, 10 minutes, and they're on the stand for just like five, 10 minutes. It's very powerful because then the jury says, look, so all these people are lying. All these people are lying. It just doesn't make any sense. And, and of course, it's true. And then boom. And then you, you show the impact of someone's life. So yeah, so I hope this was helpful. I think that's really what it comes down to. How long versus how much. Now, of course, you have to evaluate each case on a case-by-case -case basis. And that's what we're also going to do in future videos. We're going to do stories about some recent cases we settled. I just settled a case uh, my office just settled a case for about uh, close to 800000 And this was a case of two people in Nassau County that got into a car crash, actually a truck crash. We could do a, a, a video about that. There was another case that was a slip and fall case. I think I talked about this case before in the context of other things like using Google Maps and uh, I showed some of the, um, the defects. And anyway, but that case settled for I think 750000 that was in Brooklyn. And then uh, we had a few others. We had like another one, I think. Uh, so I'll do, I'll, do a few, I'll do a few more videos about those cases. So you could see how they were prepared, how, how long they took. Neither of them took too long. One of them actually was really quick. One of them was a change of attorney. I think that actually was maybe somebody on YouTube. It was a change of attorney. The first attorney handling the case didn't really do anything. I, mean, I was even surprised. He was just kind of sitting on it. He had a small offer, but he wasn't even pushing the case we got the file we uh pushed the case did some depositions you know moved it fast tracked it able to settle it just in a few months and much much greater i think his offer was like just a few like fifty thousand or something we got over 800 it was for two different people and it was like the injections where they do the pain management so it wasn't anything like horrific and it was nassau county which is a very conservative venue you know in fact there was another case out in nassau county that we had to take to trial and uh the judge said, look, Nassau County, these kind of cases usually go for under 100,000, meaning pain management cases. And uh, so, you know, but this was a really good result to get 800,000, almost a million on that kind of case. And then the other one was uh, a slip and fall on, on ice, but the ice was also covering like a defect in the, in the sidewalk. And it was near a, a garage to an apartment building. So the cars were going in and out and they caused some damage to the sidewalk. So the poor, poor guy fell, he broke his ankle really bad and he had like open reduction internal fixation which is a serious injury and he, he we settled that one for 750,000 and that one also took just about a few years I would say three four years we, we did depositions uh, we were ready to put that case on the trial calendar and go to trial with it so I hope this was helpful this is another example of how long versus how much let us know what other questions you have we are here for you we're going to answer your questions we're going to you know take your comments live uh, next week. And we're also going to do more last week tonight's where we read your comments and answer them live. And I'm going to go back to another series that I was doing where I did um, verdicts. You know, I did like a jury verdict uh, reviews from like Verdict Surge, from Westlaw, LexisNexis, all the databases, interesting verdicts. And I would comment on the verdicts and talk about them and all aspects of it. So I'm going to go back to doing that. So let me know what verdicts you want to see. I know some of the common ones are like truck accidents, construction accidents, maybe something with like traumatic brain injury or uh, spinal fusion or, or neck injury, uh, pain management, but I'm going to try to do as many of those. And hopefully if I can get access, I won't only do New York, but I'll try to expand my reach a little bit and do some national verdicts as well. Okay. I hope this was helpful. Let us know what questions you have. We are here for you. Have a great day, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye.